I know when my prayer is answered. Yesterday we said when you have prayed confidently, when you have prayed in the Spirit, when you have prayed with thanksgiving, when the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit, then you know that your prayer is answered. We have also said when you have prayed with your heart, when you have prayed according to the will of God, when you have prayed in the name of Jesus. Remember we did mention at the beginning of the week that prayer is a two-way communication channel. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. It is not you just bombarding heaven with your desires. No, it is you speaking to God and waiting for God to speak back to you. I remember it was said that a lot of times the answers to our prayers lies in instructions received in the place of prayer. And so tonight, we go a step further. How do I know when my prayer is answered? When your faith says so. When your faith says so. What that means is that you must receive it spiritually before it can be delivered practically. When your faith and my faith says so. Matthew 21 and verse 22. Watch this very carefully. And all things, so it may all things. Say it louder yet, all things. And all things. Whatsoever you shall ask in prayers, believing, you shall receive them. So between asking and receiving is believing. That is, you cannot receive what you do not believe. When my faith says so. In the words of God's servant, the blessed Archbishop of Blessed Memory, Ben Sinidaosa, he said, when your faith says yes, God will not say no. That means whatever is possible with your faith is possible with God. How do I know when my prayer is answered? When your faith says it is answered, then it is a done deal. God's servant, the Chancellor, Dr. David Edepo, will always say, every day is God's day. The day your faith comes alive is your own day. God answers prayer daily. God is no more powerful on Sunday than he is on Monday or Tuesday. You know, there are people who wait on, only on Sunday for God to answer their prayer. Let me just go to church. No. Or let me just go for chapel service. You know. Let me just attend communion service. All of that is beautiful, great. But you don't have to wait. Is the God of the day and the night. Is the God of every day. Say with me, God of every day. Say it louder. Say God of every day. Until your faith says it is received, your hands cannot take delivery of it. Mark eleven twenty four. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, no matter what it is, even if it looks impossible in your eyes, even if it looks impossible in the eyes of men, 
whatsoever things you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So, you have a desire. Pray about your desire. Believe that you receive it and then you will have it. Until your faith says your prayers are answered, it is not answered. It is not the length of prayers that counts, but the strength of faith engaged. It is not the length of prayers that counts, but the strength of faith engaged. It's a good thing to pray for long hours, yes, it has its own place. But if you pray for long hours without faith, you will still not get anything. That is why he said, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. In Matthew 6 and verse 5, thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us how Jesus said, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue. Let men see me. Let people know that I'm praying. They must know that I go to HOD ground regularly. They must know that me, I am synonymous to HOD ground. Don't get me wrong. Going to HOD ground to pray is, is good, is beautiful. I go there to pray myself. So we are all engaging, right? But doing it for sure does not equal to answers. In fact, that your voice is the loudest on HOD ground does not mean heaven will respond. Hello. Do I shout when I pray? Ah, you need to see me sometimes when I shout. I shout when I pray. When I'm led to shout, I shout. When I'm led to pray quietly, I pray quietly. I can pray by your side and you will not pray. And I can also pray by your side. You won't be able to stay by my side. <laughs> so all of that has its place. Don't get me wrong. But what is Jesus saying? What determines whether your prayers will be answered is not in the length of the prayers, is not in the intensity of the shouting, but in the strength of your faith. The strength, the capacity of your faith. It is your faith content that determines how fast, how quickly you can get answers to your prayers. Strength of your faith. The Bible tells us in Romans 4, verse 20 and 21, concerning Abraham, watch this very carefully. He said, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but what? He was strong in faith. He told me strong in faith. Say it louder. Say strong in faith. He was strong in faith. Giving glory unto God. Being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. He was strong in faith. How do I build strong faith? How do I build strength into my faith? A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth in strength. <laughs> Proverbs 24, verse 5. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. So, you want to possess strong faith? Grow in your knowledge of the truth. Grow in the revelation of the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The more of the truth you know, the more of the truth you are walking in, the greater your freedom, the greater your liberty. Grow in the knowledge of the truth. And when we talk about knowledge of the truth, we are not talking about head knowledge. We are not talking about sense knowledge. We are talking about revelation knowledge. 
the revelation of the truth, the light of the world beaming in your heart. A man of knowledge increases strength. In Isaiah 33, verse 6, he said, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. Wisdom and knowledge shall give you stability and give you strength. Remember, a wise man is strong. A man of knowledge will increase in strength. Now, Wisdom will give you stability. Knowledge will give you strength. And who is a wise man? He that heareth these things of mine and doeth them is a wise man. The storm will come. The wind will blow. Nothing will happen to him. Why? He is found dead on the rock. When we talk about the revelation of the truth, it is that place where you can see what God is saying concerning your desires and expectations. The place where you can see the realities of your expectations or desires. God's servant, the chancellor, will always say no one can doubt what he sees. You can't doubt what you see. Wherever you are in this auditorium, I'm sure you can see my jacket, right? Can you doubt the color of the jacket? No. Why? You can see it. Will you argue with someone now? Uh, I think Chaplin is wearing a black jacket. I think it's black. What would you say if somebody says that to you? You say your eyes need adjustment. What I'm seeing is not what you are saying. Right? But if you are not seeing me, let's say you are outside and somebody tells you Chaplin is wearing a black jacket, what will happen? You are likely going to believe it, right? Or if you are sensitive and smart, you say, well, are you sure? You say, I am sure. You say, well, I, I, I don't think you are right. Or maybe, well, okay. What clears out the uncertainty and the doubts is that you can see. Is somebody following what I'm saying? What you see, you don't doubt. The Bible talks about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, how that Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy that was set before him. So the strength with which he went through the cross was on the premise of what he could see. He saw the crown. And because of what he could see, it didn't matter what the process was. He was able to endure the process to obtain what he could see. What you see, you don't doubt. The place of the revelation of the truth is that place where you are fully persuaded of the truth. Fully persuaded. Convinced beyond doubt. Unwavering confidence. That place of absolute trust and confidence. For all of this to happen, feed on the word. Feed on the word. Read the word. Study the word. Meditate in the word. Speak the word. Do the word. Practice the word. He that heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man that built his house on the rock. The storm came. The wind came. No shaking. Why? He was found dead. He said, but he that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not, I will liken him to a foolish man. The wind came, blew against the house, and the house fell. Great was the fall of that house. Why? He's not a doer of the word. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. So read the word, study the word, 
meditate on the word, declare the word, practice the word. How do I generate strong faith? Don't stay away from fellowship. Every opportunity to appear in Zion is an opportunity to be strengthened. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them as they appear before God in Zion. Psalm 84 and verse 7. Don't stay away from fellowship. He said, don't be like some of them who have erred from the faith and as a result of that, they have made a shipwreck of their lives. In the name of Jesus, for someone here, the faith required to take delivery of your own answers is already impacted. When you no longer stagger on the subject matter, but you are now giving God glory, then you know that it is a done deal. Philippians 4, verse 6, be anxious for nothing, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayers, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall flood your heart. Glory to God. Let me add one more for you. You want to build your faith? Pray in the Spirit. Exercise yourself in the Spirit. Charge up yourself. He said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. To edify himself means to charge up himself like you are charging a battery. Charge up your spirit. Jude 20 talks about building yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, but for that to happen, it is not praying absent minded in, in the spirit. It is being conscious of what you are doing. Deliberate. You are deliberately engaged in what you are doing. Not praying in tongues, and after you leave here, you finish praying in tongues, you are, you are as light as paper. You can't tell anything that happened. No, that's not what we are saying. We are talking about intentionality in engaging with the Holy Ghost for the purpose of charging up your spirit. And you know you can do that anywhere. You can do that on the road. You can do that anywhere. Charge up yourself. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Say, what is happening? Say, nothing is happening. We are charging up the atmosphere. <laughs> Taking charge. Oh. Hallelujah. That's what we are talking about. Well, from now, your prayers will not go unanswered. Yeah. Rise up on your feet. How I many of us want to charge up ourselves tonight? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I give you one minute. What should you do? Charge up yourself. Shout if you want to shout. Scream if you want to scream, but charge up yourself. <laughs> Someone is catching the fire already. Pray now, Holy Ghost. Yes. Satanin and Atenes Kebalados. Sakatana and Nekatabal of Shabala.
to grow the fire on your prayer altar will never go out the fire of faith burning in your heart be on the increase from tonight in the name of Jesus every form of prayer infirmity every struggle in the place of prayer Every prayer weakness now be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. As you depart from here tonight, the Holy Ghost strengthen you with might in the inner man in the name of Jesus. Every weakness gives way to strength. Strength in your spirit. Strength in your soul. Strength in your body. You came in with any kind of weakness, it is gone. You came in sick, that symptom disappears. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity. And I command your healing right now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. You go from here, you walk in liberty. Amen. Be refreshed as you go. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Ghost. Your sleep tonight shall be sweet. Amen. Your night shall be refreshing. Amen. It shall be another night of encounter for you. You wake up tomorrow morning transformed, empowered for conquest in the name of Jesus. Say with me, put your right hand on your forehead. There is no place for sickness in my body. No place for affliction in my body. I've been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. Therefore, I live in health and wholeness. Thank you, Jesus. I bear in my body the mark of Christ. Therefore, let no man trouble me. Thank you, Jesus. Go in peace. I cover you all with the precious blood of the Lamb. No evil report concerning any of us. Tomorrow is the last evening service for this fasting season. And better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. And so tomorrow shall be a special night for the miraculous. Tomorrow shall be a miracle service. The time is the same. But our focus is the God of miracles shall manifest himself in our midst. Amen. No one sick shall return with any ailment in their body. Amen. 
no one oppressed shall return as a victim of the wicked. So let's come with our hearts prepared, ready to meet with the God of miracles. And in the name of Jesus, none of us will be disappointed. Yeah. On Saturday, we shall be meeting in all our Love Feast location at 5 p.m. Yeah.